Hello people, my name is Virginia and welcome to my YouTube channel. So it's around 12 o'clock in the morning, I just woke up, probably you can tell by my very very sleepy face. I made coffee, of course, and uh, I don't know when you're gonna watch this video, but right now we are in quarantine. Um, of course the coronavirus has struck, the apocalypse has begun, and everybody has decided to isolate in their houses and that is my case too, I'm self-quarantined so obviously now I have a lot of time of course that is the great moment to craft I mean there's nothing else to do so obviously crafting is definitely an option um, so I've decided I'm gonna attempt weaving today Mm -hmm. I've never done it before, like not like weaving weaving, I've uh, done some tablet weaving so I have a little bit of experience but not with a proper loom. I got a loom around Christmas this year but of course I've been postponing the project a long long time. <laughs> Uh, but you know, when apocalypse comes, what else do you have to do? So I'm gonna start today! <laughs> uh, thankfully enough, I have enough yarn. I'm always prepared when it comes to yarn and stash. Uh, yes, I will show you, just in case you don't believe me. I have a whole box of yarn. <laughs> Kindly uh, donated to me uh, by Karen Biam. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. She is a brave woman because she's decided to give me all these thread to work with uh, to me. I repeat again, or in case I haven't said it before, I've never done this. <laughs> so she is definitely a brave woman. She will keep also uh, whatever crappy result I get from it. Uh, yeah. Why not do it? So this is my loom. Mm -hmm. It is a four shaft loom as you can see. It is quite wide, which I love about it. Because my plan and my intention is to make my own fabric for all of my clothes. Modern and Viking. So that way I have enough width to do that. I guess she's very happy right now that uh, corona time happened <laughs> we will put you to work girl don't worry i'm coming <laughs> i have been a good girl and i've made myself a sample i've been working okay it took me three months to start the project but i haven't been too lazy or completely lazy um just basically trying different techniques and different uh, uh, threads per centimeter and whatnot. Um, I tried tabby, uh, twill 2x1 two and twill 2x2. Two two. Thanks for the instruction to Yeni2, who I am going to spam with all my questions, obviously, because she is the expert, I am not. So beware, Yeni, your um, <laughs> chat is going to be full of my questions. <laughs> I uh, hope you're ready for it, um, but yeah, so after making the sample, I washed it to see how much it would shrink, which actually it shrunk quite a lot, especially lengthwise, and I decided to settle with uh, six um, threads per centimeter and two by two twill, because it is what I like the most, I love how it looks. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. <laughs> I don't know how it's gonna go, but uh, it will be a journey. The steps of this project are going to be one, winding the warp. Never done it, first time. Also, in these corona times, I don't really have the proper equipment. I don't have a winding frame or anything. I just have whatever I have lying around here. So... I think it's probably gonna be benches that's gonna be my winding frame because why not I mean corona times require benches 
After that, if everything goes all right, I will try to set the loom. I'm going to try to aim for 56 centimeters width of the loom uh, before washing, of course, and as long as I can make it because yeah, then I have a lot of room for uh, seeing what I'm doing basically and learning. I have a lot of room for learning and I can see uh, all the mistakes that I've made and blah 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 and get used to the fact that I'm weaving, get used to the rhythm, get used to what I have to do and whatnot. I don't know exactly how long it will be. I know for sure I'm going to lose some length after I take it off the loom um, and I guess it will be around half a meter, one meter loss but just in case, I will make it extra long. Yeah, you never know, and I'd rather have more than less. <laughs> so after setting the loom, I will try to weave, and hopefully I won't mess it too much, and I will have something in the end that I can show you. Aha! I don't know how long it will take. Um, probably I will be very active and motivated during this corona time, so hey-ho, I mean, you, we have to look at the silver linings here with this corona thing. <laughs> uh, and I will check with you later when I start winding the warp. Well, hello. It's a little bit later in the day. And this is the situation right now. I started warping it with two wonderful benches. And um, right now I have 36 threads already done. Actually, I started the 37th and I need 300 more. Uh, as you can see, I have a very interested audience. Say hello, Zilla, the Viking cat. <laughs> he's been uh, watching my progress and I think he's gonna watch it for a while because this is gonna take long. <laughs> so I need 306 threads because I want uh, a width of 56 centimeters and then six threads um, per centimeters, so 336 it is. Also, I have to divide it into the four shafts. Hopefully, the math will be correct. So, the warp is done. <laughs> I actually finished it yesterday, but uh, it was very dark and I was too tired to continue. So I decided to start the next step today instead. As you can see here, I had a little bit of an issue because I didn't realize um, that, well, I wanted to leave a gap in between the benches so I had enough space for the cross. And then they started coming together. So this part is way more tension than this part. But so I will try to fix it when I put it on the loom and hopefully it will be fine. So information for all of you, don't do as me. <laughs> I will see you later when it's on the loom or somewhere there. <laughs> so the loom is set. Um, it's been a long process for sure and it's been a learning curve, for sure, and I've made loads of mistakes because obviously what would life be without mistakes? It would be too boring. So yeah, <laughs> we had to spice it up. So basically what I've done here is I won the warp, brought it to the front and threaded the heddles and the reed. Um, I threaded the heddles to uh, have a two by two twill in the end. And for all that, I've used this, crochet hooks, uh, because I don't have the proper tools. So this is a tip I got from Yeni. Um, I will leave her information in the description. Uh, she's been an angel and helping me a lot. Uh, so this is a tip I got from her to use crochet hooks. I use two different sizes. Um, number four or 4.0 for the heddles and a smaller one size two for the reed i don't know how to crochet so i don't know if that helps or not 
but that's what I used. And then I brought it to the front and tried to evenly tension it. So let's see how that works. <laughs> I've made some adjustments because uh, remember the problem I had with the tensioning of the warp? Well, it was a huge problem. And when I tried to thread the heddles, it was just not having it. Uh, I was, it was just crumbling. There was no way I could not see the threads. It was just not happening. Uh, I had to get rid of some of the warp, which broke my heart after all that work. But yeah, it had to be done. So to compensate for the fact that I lost some of the warp, I decided to, instead of do six threads per centimeter, I decided to do five threads per centimeter. So obviously it will be less wide, but it won't be such a drastic change if you compare it to the original plan I had. Hmm? Yeah, so that's basically all the information and the stage we're at. Um, I will start weaving now and probably will take me forever because again, I've never done this, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So wish me luck and I will see you when I see you. Well, basically the process that I'm following is I open the shaft by moving the shafts. I'm making a two by two twill. So what I'm doing is one or first and second shaft, then second and third, then third and fourth, and then fourth and first, and repeat, repeat, repeat. So right now I need to open the second and the third shaft. And do that to help the shed to open check that everything is correct here i pass the shuttle pass the thread through and create this diagonal here Pulling tightly, then I close the shed and beat the thread. Don't do it too harshly. And that's it. Shaft shadow, beat, repeat. <laughs> and this is the result of today. Look at that, people. It's happening. It's happening. I'm very loosely weaving it, but oh my god, it looks so good! Um, it is two days after the last time we spoke, and I'm already halfway through the warp, I think. I cannot really measure it, but I think I'm already halfway through the warp, and so far, so good. Um, there are obviously mistakes in it, um, I wasn't expecting anything else. I'm learning a few things from all the weaving and working on it and whatnot, which is pretty cool. I keep having problems with the tension. Uh, it's quite uneven at the back. I keep it very even on the front, but on the back it keeps not being even enough. So I have to do some tightening and readjusting every time I roll onto this side so that's been fun and so far it has been working so I'm not going to complain other things that I have been noticing is I'm getting used to seeing the work and noticing all these little tiny details like for example I understand how the threads work now I start being able to tell which one should go up, which one should go down more easily. And if there is something that I need to readjust when I move the shafts, I can easily do it, no problem. I can easily tell from the edges of the weaving, I can tell what shafts I've moved before, which is pretty cool. Also, it makes my life a lot easier because I don't need to be remembering all the time what I've done right before because you know, I'm listening to music and I'm in this groove and whatnot, and sometimes I'm, I just don't remember what shafts I move. 
so it is very nice not having to be so concentrated on what have I done all the time there is one thing that I definitely have changed or I've noticed I should control more and it's the corners when I'm passing the weft through the shed I've realized that I get the neater edge if I really control the corner while I'm pulling the string through if I take the thread and pull it down a little bit while I'm passing the weft through the shed and pulling it tight it works a lot better because it was starting to um, create a V shape even if I beat it with a beater so if I pull it down while I'm passing the thread and I make it this diagonal I really control how it works and it gives a very very nice edge now a very interesting thing and I'm very happy that I realized at some point way at the beginning it's that since I'm doing a 2x2 two two twill uh, every few rows I have to tuck the first thread on the right side because it won't it will just float uh, if I don't do that if it's in the upper part of the shed I need to force it to be on the lower side because in the beginning I was just weaving and I saw this gigantic floating thread on the right side I was like what's going on and then I realized that it's because I'm not tucking it <laughs> into the weaving I'm not actually weaving it <laughs> so that was interesting for sure uh, but then I realized that I have to force it to weave in a way kind of so be careful if you're doing that be careful with that thread because you need to force that guy <laughs> you need to make him behave <laughs> I still have a very long way to go even if I'm halfway through I still have a lot of work so I will keep going and if I find out something else I will definitely share it with you so it is later in the same day and I mean it like way later <laughs> I've been weaving all day non-stop but I wanted to get this done and it is complete and it's long <laughs> I measured it and it's 3 meters and 75 centimeters um, 50 centimeters on the widest part it's a little bit un uneven in length and in width and there is some bumpiness as you can see but it's done I mean I am so happy I am exhausted too but oh can't wait to see the final product I still need to wash it this is right off the loom but uh, we'll catch up with you tomorrow and we'll see the change in measurements and whatnot and how it looks hopefully it will look okay <laughs> still and here is a close-up of the result after washing I don't know if you can see it very well or not but uh, it shrunk quite a bit but still very flowy you can see my hand on the other side it feels very good in the hand, it's very soft, very flowy, it has loads of movement, I'm very happy today. <laughs> so this is the result in its full glory. As you can see, there's a lot of fabric here, it turned out to be quite long. As I said in the video when I took it off the loom, um, it was 3 meters and 75 seven centimeters long in the longest part because there was a, a bit of a difference and an evenness and whatnot. Right now it is 3 meters and 58 centimeters after everything, after hemming the ends and after washing. So it hasn't shrunk too much, um, but it's completely understandable because it was a very gentle wool wash what I used so that's why it's still very very flowy hmm? but it's still as I said very long still very long <laughs> 
it's happened the same with the width so it hasn't shrunk too much but it's okay even if it's flowy even if it's still you can see my hand on the other side and whatnot even if it's a very soft and not stiff fabric it's okay because if you want a stiffer fabric you can always felt it even more so I'm not mad about having a soft fabric because you can always make it stiffer that's the reason why I didn't want to make a very stiff and compact fabric in the beginning because there's always a way to make it stiffer but there's never a way to bring it back from being stiff fabric so it's been a big and long process I've worked a lot on that loop because also I wanted to finish it as soon as possible I really wanted to see the result and I'm very happy about it <laughs> I've learned a lot of all these little tiny mistakes definitely need to check the tension way more next time I wind that warp because uh, it was a little bit difficult having to deal with it every single time I rolled onto the front side it was a lot of work to have to retie it and retie the back every single time uh, so hopefully next time I will be better at tensioning and yeah now I have the idea of where I need to look when I'm weaving so that it's way way better uh, it's so easy now to see where the threads needs to go whereas in the beginning I was like I don't know what I'm doing here if you're wondering what this fabric is going to be, I don't know because uh, as I said in the beginning uh, this fabric is not for me, it is for Karen she uh, gave me the wool to work with so in return I'm giving her the woven fabric so I don't know what she's gonna make with it but if you're interested and if you're wondering what's gonna happen to this a wonderful fabric uh, you can always uh, follow me on Instagram and um, at Virsama same as the name of the channel and uh, you can get updates on this fabric and on other projects that I'm working on also glimpses at my crazy life and my crazy project and whatnot my goal is to upload a video every Friday check the channel for that if you follow me on Instagram I will notify you whenever I post a video so definitely do that I would love to read your comments anything you have to say about the project about the fabric about what you would have done what you wouldn't have done and whatnot I'm pretty sure there are better ways of doing something like this but this is my first time doing it I had I had some help but in the end I did it all by myself without any present face-to-face help so it was a learning experience and a learning curve and I just wanted to make mistakes that was my goal and my goal was to make all the mistakes I could so hopefully next time I make less mistakes because I'm pretty sure I will still make uh, <laughs> loads of mistakes I will link all of the videos resources useful information and all these things that I've been mentioning in the video in the description box below so make sure to check that and last but definitely not least subscribe for more content for more projects for more fun for sure and please share this video with everybody if you found it interesting i'm very happy uh, with the result with everything with the project and hopefully it will have inspired you to uh, weave to try weaving for the first time to uh, to go back to your loom if you already have one and that was all I could ask for um, I will see you next time hopefully and in the meantime I will be here crafting definitely <laughs>